On July 29, 2017, AMD held their Tech Day for two of the most exciting products to come out of the company in years, Ryzen Threadripper and RX Vega. Now, obviously, I wasn't able to be at the Tech Day because I was busy with the rest of my team hosting our first ever LTX Tech Carnival, but AMD provided me the briefing materials and Alienware sent over this Area 51 so that I could show off both AMD's top of the line 1950X 16 core 32 thread processor and a prototype of the RX Vega 64 limited edition from this park bench. Browse privately and securely with TunnelBear, the simple VPN app. Start your seven day free trial at the link in the video description. Let's start with Vega. The bulk of graphics cards actually sell for under $300. But that doesn't mean that there's no value to having an enthusiast offering. Enthusiasts recommend hardware to their less enthusiastic friends. So if you're AMD, every RX Vega you sell might sell a 560 or three. So to compete in this space, AMD says they went back to the drawing board on a lot of things. A brand new pixel engine, brand new geometry engine, support for rapid packed math to accelerate the rendering of objects that don't benefit from higher precision, and eight gigs of state-of-the-art HBM2 memory with up to an unbelievable 484 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. The entry-level card called Vega 56 contains only 56 of their next-gen compute units versus 64 in the higher-end SKUs. It's air-cooled, consumes about 150 watts, according to rumors, full benchmarks will follow when the review embargo lifts, and seems to be positioned against the GTX 1070 at $399 standalone. While the top-tier Vega 64 is available in two configurations, an air-cooled version at 1546 MHz boost and up to a rumored 300 watts, and a water-cooled one at 1677 boost and I hope this isn't right, up to 400 watts of power consumption. As for pricing for this one, it gets a little complicated. Out of the gate, AMD is offering what they're calling Radeon packs. So two games that vary by region, the Germany version might contain Prey and Sniper Elite rather than Wolfenstein 2, for example. $200 off of an ultra-wide Samsung FreeSync monitor and $100 off a Ryzen 7 CPU and motherboard combo. AMD is touting this as up to $420 of value, and it seems like it's adding about $100 to the price that you pay based on the entry-level pack with Vega 56. And I guess all I can say is I hope that you, the consumer, think that's a good deal, because at launch, while this limited edition brushed metal shroud is available, it's likely that the only way you'll be able to buy a Vega 64 is with a bundle. This annoying restriction appears to be an attempt to ship cards to gamers rather than just wiping out all their inventory to coin miners. So at least I can see that AMD's heart is in the right place but I'd like to hear what you guys in the comments think about that. On to Ryzen Threadripper. This one is both simpler and more complicated in some ways. It's simple because we have a pretty good idea of what to expect based on the specs. The 1950X is a 16 core, 32 thread, 3.4 gigahertz based, four gigahertz boost quad channel DDR4 monster. So given that we're already familiar with single-threaded Zen performance at a given frequency and Zen multi-core scaling across CCX units, the only real question mark left is how the quad-channel memory enabled by AMD's use of four CCXs instead of two will affect Zen performance. And if I had to guess, I'd say that's going to be a really good thing. Now it's complicated because it's hard to assign value to these high-end desktop parts in traditional ways. At $1,000, the 1950X 
is not a great value for gaming in the sense that an overclocked Ryzen 5 for a fraction of the cost will perform very similarly or even better. But from a content creation, data science, and mega tasking perspective, it's a total game changer. And its pricing is a big part of that story. Over the last couple of generations, Intel has inched up the pricing of its flagship consumer processors in an apparent attempt to avoid cannibalizing the lucrative Xeon lineup. And AMD says, nope! They're launching two other chips here. The 1920X is a 12-core variant with similar clock speeds, but that one's not that interesting to me. I think an extra 200 bucks for four more cores is a great deal by the time you're dropping fat stacks of money on an X399 motherboard and a cooler that's gonna have to handle a rumored 180 watts. And they're also launching an eight core 1900X. This one is actually more interesting to me because even though it has the same core count as a Ryzen 7, if you're building a workstation or compute box, you might not need a ton of CPU, and 550 bucks is a phenomenal value for the quad-channel memory controller and more importantly, 64 PCI Express lanes, enough to run pretty much as many GPUs as you want without running into bandwidth limits. So in summary then, to gamers, unless you're hardcore into CPU encoding your Twitch streams while you play, which we will be testing in our full review, it's not too relevant. But to folks like me, Ryzen Threadripper looks like a game changer. Want to get an AMD graphics card of your own? We're going to have a link to where to buy them at Amazon in the video description. And while you're over there, don't forget to pick up a Prime membership. Features include free two-day shipping, free same-day delivery depending on where you live, Prime Video with unlimited streaming of movies and TV episodes for paid and trial members, Amazon Dash for Prime so you never run out of your favorite products with their handy little buttons, Amazon Music Unlimited, Twitch Prime with discounts on games, ad-free viewing on Twitch and one free Twitch subscription which you can use every month and it just keeps getting better and better. So sign up for a free trial of Prime today through the link below and also check out graphic cards like Vega on Amazon. So thanks for watching guys. If you dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit the like button, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Oh wait, it's up for pre-order soon. It's not actually available yet, but don't stress about that. It'll be coming. Also down there is a link to our merch store where you can buy a cool shirt like this one, as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.